ABL space system suffered a failure during a pre-flight test. Does that spell the end for ABL? Well, not necessarily, although it is definitely a setback. Whether or not ABL is doomed or is a successful launch company just waiting for that first successful launch, which it hasn't had yet, will depend on how quickly it can get that next rocket to the launch pad and launched, whether that launch succeeds, how patient their current customers are, and how much funding they currently have. I'm going to go through all this step by step as well as talking about how ABL compares to other launch systems, especially small launchers, and whether or not ABL is just a company that is doomed to be forgotten or whether it actually will fulfill a great need for launch in the United States. In case you missed the news, last night ABL put out a tweet where they wrote, after a pre-flight static test fire on Friday, a residual pad fire caused irrecoverable damage to RS-1, that's their small rocket. The team is investigating root cause and will provide updates as the investigation progresses. They've been working on RS-1 for a while. In case you really haven't heard much of ABL because they really have been pretty stealthy. ABL was founded in 2017. So it's a seven year old company. I first heard about them back when I was doing work for Camden Spaceport. I had wrapped up some consulting work with them the year before and ABL signed a contract to launch out of Camden. Camden Spaceport is not a thing. It will never be a thing. So that won't happen. And ABL seemed like the next big thing when it comes to small launch. However, they did experience a setback in January 2022 when they had very similarly a pre-flight test failure. This one in Mojave, California at Mojave Air and Spaceport where they're used to things blowing up, you know, experimental rocketry and all of that. The big disappointment came when ABL attempted to launch their first orbital rocket, the RS-1, out of Kodiak Island, Alaska, January 10th of 2023. We don't have footage, unfortunately, because they're kind of secretive about it. But what happened was restrictive hardware caused a fire inside the rocket, which caused harness failure, which caused all of the engines to lose power and thrust. About 10 seconds into that launch, the rocket came back down to the launch pad, exploded, damaged the launch pad at Kodiak. So unfortunately, they took some time to recover from that. They'd already been working on another RS-1 rocket, but that was a setback to have that pad damage especially. And then we really hadn't heard much from them until this tweet last night where they described that they had that pre-flight test failure of RS-1. So, so far the record with ABL is one unsuccessful launch attempt and zero orbital launch successes. Things are tough. What has always surprised me about ABL is that despite not having launched successful yet, They've had no shortage of customers. They keep convincing customers to sign with them, the biggest being Lockheed Martin. Back in 2019, Lockheed Martin Ventures, which is the venture arm of Lockheed Martin, they made what they call a strategic investment in ABL. They did not give a dollar amount, but they invested in ABL. One of the reasons for this was that ABL was promising rapid launch plus low cost. So they were saying that they were going to launch 1,200 kilograms into low Earth orbit at a cost of $12 million per launch. $12 million per launch is a steal. At the time, they were saying that they were going to have that first launch done in about a year. That announcement, that strategic investment actually took place five years ago as of yesterday. So I don't think Lockheed Martin really expected it to take this long. Nonetheless, two years later in April 2021, Lockheed Martin made a giant bulk buy of ABL RS-1 rocket launches. They signed a contract of up to 26 launches through 2025 and an additional 32 launches from 2026 through 2029 58 possible launches in total. I don't know what the contract says if they don't even launch one rocket by the end of 2025. That is still a significant investment. And that is something that ABL could take to investors and say, we have a customer who's willing to launch with us 58 times. We have this significant backlog, so you should invest with us. Like that is a major win for a tiny company like this. Another big name signed with ABL back in November of 2021, that was Amazon. Amazon has its Project Kuiper satellites. It needs to launch thousands of them. It signed with ABL to launch two prototypes. That's the KuiperSat 1 and KuiperSat 2 to low Earth orbit by the fourth quarter, the end of 2022. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen. And so what we see is that some clients are willing to be patient and some clients are not. 
And Amazon has reasons for not being patient. Go ahead and check out this video I recently did on Project Kuiper and why Amazon really does need to start launching these satellites soon, although it's okay that they're delayed a little bit. Amazon did launch those first two prototype satellites. They switched the contract about a year later, October of 2022, from ABL to ULA, initially for launch on ULA's new Vulcan rocket, but then Vulcan was delayed, so they moved it to an Atlas V, which finally launched in October of 2023. So Amazon did actually get those two Kuiper satellites launched. However, it wasn't with ABL. There's this whole idea of move fast and break things. So it's okay if you test things to the limit and break it. It's okay if you've got launches that fail, but that assumes that you're launching quickly. And ABL is just not moving very quickly here. Back when ABL was coming out of stealth mode in 2018, 2019, they were saying that they were going to have their first launch done in 2020. But it wasn't until 2023 that they had their first launch attempt that was a failure. Now, here we are a year and a half later, and they haven't had that second launch attempt yet. In October 2023, the president of the company was saying that they wanted to launch by the end of 2023. I don't know what happened to that schedule. This failure on Friday was a test failure. It was not a launch failure. So I don't know when in 2024 they were actually planning to launch that rocket that is now destroyed. Regardless, they're not, they are now set back even further. I don't know if they have another RS-1 rocket that is ready to go through testing and launch and whether or not they can accomplish that by the end of this year. Regardless, it's been a year and a half and we still haven't seen a second launch attempt. A lot of the information that we have from them does come from interviews with Dan Piemont. He is a co-founder, he's the president, and he's the CFO of the company. He spoke with Space News back in October of 2021, where he said that they were under contract for more than 75 launches. Fast forward two years, October of 2023, and that same person gave an interview to Payload Space. Both of these interviews will be in the description below. He told Payload Space, that they have over 70 launches sold. So they went from 75 to 70, and I don't know if he misspoke or what, but it doesn't seem like they are growing very much. Understandably so. Most customers are not willing to sign with a company that doesn't have a proven track record yet. But there are always exceptions. So earlier this year in March, Scout Space, a small startup, signed with ABL to launch its Outlet One telescope. And the reason they signed with ABL is because they expected to have that satellite launched by the end of this year, by the end of 2024. And they had considered SpaceX, they had considered a rideshare transporter mission through SpaceX, but they said they would have to wait over a year. I don't believe that Scout's gonna have that telescope launched by the end of this year. Tell me what you think. But it, it seems to me that Scout took a risk in signing with a company that was not yet proven. And whether or not Scout stays with ABL and expects them to launch sooner than a rideshare with SpaceX, or whether Scout will consider moving their contract just like Amazon did remains to be seen. One thing I am fairly confident about is that Lockheed Martin is going to stick with ABL at least for a while longer. They don't seem to be in any rush. They haven't assigned any particular missions to ABL except for a UK Pathfinder mission that is funded by the UK government that really isn't urgent in any way. It does not seem like any of Lockheed Martin's launches are actually urgent. It was more of a strategic investment. And there has been rumors that Lockheed Martin might actually acquire ABL in the future. Now, I think that will depend on ABL's performance because Lockheed Martin is responsible to its stakeholders and they would have to convince their stakeholders that an acquisition of ABL is valuable and will be profitable. And at this point, that's not happening. So I think Lockheed Martin is going to stick with it a little while longer, either until ABL proves itself as a successful launch company that could be acquired or until Lockheed Martin just lets go. ABL's success also depends on how much money it has, and it's a privately held company. So we don't know how much money it currently has, how much money it's burning. We are not privy to that information, but we do have information about its investors. In March of 2021, it raised $170 million in a Series B round. And then and in October of that year, it raised an additional $200 million in an extension. It is a bit harder to fundraise right now. Back in 2021, if you remember, investors were throwing money at space companies. So it would probably be a bit harder for ABL to fundraise right now because of the timing and because of the launch failure, but it's probably not impossible. There are still investments that are happening in launch companies in particular. We also know that the US government has invested in ABL space. March of 2023, there was a strategic funding increase investment where the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Space Force gave ABL $30 million in an agreement where $30 million would come from investors. Now, I mentioned that ABL has been around since 2017 and has yet to launch a successful mission. 
Is that something to be worried about? Well, yes and no, right? They do need to prove themselves at some point. But if you look at comparable space companies, you can see that they're not too terribly off track with what we've seen in recent history. For example, SpaceX. They were founded in 2002. They had three launch failures over a two and a half year period until they finally had their first successful Falcon launch September 28th, 2008. That was six and a half years after SpaceX was founding. Firefly is another comparable company. They're usually lumped together, these smaller launch companies. Firefly was founded, if you look at Firefly Space Systems, it was founded in 2014 later became Firefly Aerospace. They had two launch failures over two years before they had a successful launch on September 15th of 2023, and that was nine and a half years after founding. They went through a lot of turmoil in that nine and a half years, by the way. Rocket Lab, one of the more successful launch companies in the world right now, they were founded in 2006. They had one launch failure before they succeeded in launching for the first time on January 21st of 2018. And that was 11 and a half years after founding. And then one more company that's typically lumped in with these small launch companies, that's Relativity Space. They were founded in 2015. They had one launch failure. They gave up on that rocket. They're now working on a, a larger version of their rocket Terran R that is currently scheduled for 2026. So they haven't had a successful launch yet either. So ABL here, they're in this middle ground where they could succeed, they could fail. It's really too soon to tell, but they're not taking so long that we should give up on them yet. They still have a chance to rebuild and to have a successful first launch. Most of their customers will hang in there. And another thing to note is, I've been saying this repeatedly, is that there is a launch shortage in the Western world. If ABL is able to launch successfully at some point in the next you know, year or two, I believe that there is room for them simply because there's growing launch demand and not enough access to space. My condolences to the ABL team on the recent failure. I wish you the best of luck trying again.